Oh my gosh, we're live! Alright, go ahead, man. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Cinedome's newest podcast, Cinephiliacs. I'm your co-host, Daniel Scott DeJess, and with me is... AK. Hey, AK, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm gonna turn this shitty mic down. <laughs> Just turn it off. If there's one thing you can learn about podcasting, everybody, learn to work with shitty mics. Yeah, I'm going to just turn this down. Because yeah, I'm gonna that's just... how you know you're doing a good good podcast. But we're rolling with the punches, so thanks for joining us today. Uh, so, AK, how you doing? You, I'm doing you, good, you, man. You sure? Um, you, you, seem, yeah. you seem a little, you seem that sounds like getting to you. I'm like hyper-focused on the sound today. I don't know if you've noticed, but we've been, go we've been, we've been, there's been some battles going on over here on this side while you've been having a great time i'm having a i've I'm been over an here amazing time with the punching back interference and stuff yeah yeah keep doing your job it's great uh hey you know we have some guests today right oh okay what yeah that's right there's two this time do you want to know who they are yes everyone stand up for a standing ovation for uh lovely guests today personal friends of mine Haley and austin spicer Hey guys, how you doing? Hey. Good, good. Usually people introduce us as Austin and Haley Spicer. I thought I'd change it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I because I, I, I appreciate I, it because I do it as well. I'll always be like, oh yeah, Austin and Haley. Maybe because of the the letter, like you feel yeah. just the yeah. alphabet, right? A H S. Mm -hmm. But I was like, no, 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 no. Today, I'm gonna change it up because Austin, you don't always deserve to go first. I don't know. You do. You're right, <laughs> dude. I have to say, you're a good host. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're a professional. Thanks. We're only like a couple minutes in. Why'd you say that, dude? <laughs> yeah, I know the head just got. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really blushing right now, everybody. Uh, yeah. So, uh, AK, just to like kind of talk about some accomplishments they've they've mm -hmm. done, um, is as as you've done, you know, and in, in over your over your time in the industry, uh, Austin and Haley have written several feature films. Um, he's and they've actually won several awards for the many short films they've made, which is always fantastic. And uh, he loves, Austin specifically, loves doing uh, what he loves with his wife. That's awesome. Did I say life or wife? Both. Okay. I got very confused. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure. And Haley, in her own right, is doing narrative work full-time, obviously with Austin, but um, it's a very much of an accomplishment because, as we know, especially here in the Florida industry, the commercial work is very... Uh, it just happened a lot. It's very heavy, and so to be doing narrative work full time, I think, is very cool for you guys. How is that? How is it? How is it not having to deal with commercials? Oh, it's it's it's. <laughs> I don't even know. It's nice. It's it's fun, but it, you know, everywhere you go, you you you're still working with other people. You know, it's yeah, kind of the same process, and you win some, you lose some on on yeah. cruise. You know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and obviously, like. Mm -hmm. You've both worked on commercials, so you know the difference in terms of the vibe or energy it can yes. impose between oh, yeah. narrative and commercial. And yeah. what do you think is a huge difference that drives you towards wanting narrative work, other than like the story and the medium? Mm -hmm. But what drives you towards narrative work on the work aspect over commercials? It's definitely not the pay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's... It, the whole uh, vibe on set is just kind of like, you know, after a few days, everybody gets in their flow. Um, you just kind of, everybody's there to do the same thing, do what they love, you know. It's not like you have to be there because of the pay. Right. Um, yeah. I think it's more creative, especially when we're DP in it. Yeah. We can, I mean, it's a lot of work. That's why, like, doing narrative work full time, it can be very draining. And like, when you have your breaks, you take your breaks and you relax. But yeah, it's just more creative, and you can have fun with every project. Yeah, and obviously, um, I didn't say it yet, but one of the accomplishments I think you guys have is being um, one uh, having a successful relationship in this industry, as we, just because of the the strain the strain that can have. Just in terms of the work hours this industry usually has, whether you're as an actor, director, or, or producer, you know, it's, we know it's long hours, mm -hmm. long days. Um, so one, to have a successful relationship, but also to have that then also be, you know, you guys are creative partners as well as a director and DP combination. Um, so how did that, you know, 
I guess, kind of tell us how you got in this industry to start with, whether it was, I mean, I know a little bit about your story, but I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything for our listeners or viewers, but like how that kind of came about, whether it was, you know, relationship first, not necessarily, um, dating or when you guys that in that route, but just obviously whether it was friends first and then you kind of got in the industry or kind of how that came to be in your own individual stories. So if you want to just talk about that a little bit. Well, um, I'd say going all the way back before we even got in the industry, um, in eighth grade, made a short film. She was acting in it. I was like direct kind of doing everything. Like I just wanted to do a short film. And at that point, after I made the short film and showed it to everybody I knew and stuff and put it on YouTube, I was like, this was like the coolest experience ever. I, you know, I want to do this. I don't know if that's even feasible, yeah. like doing this for a career or anything, or if this is like a hobby or if this isn't even a question of if I can do this. But um, just through high school, we, we did several short films and um, instead of she, she acted in two and then the rest she was like more on the camera side of things. So I was able to focus on directing our friends and not having to worry about, Oh, what's going on with the camera and the sound and everything. And then we kind of there figured out like how we like working and we switched it up sometimes like on Crestview street. Yeah. You know, yeah. We flipped roles and yeah. stuff and we're like, maybe we don't want to do that again. And then <laughs> go back to how we started working. <laughs> and, it was kind of just taking the time to figure out how we work and, you know, learning along the way of like what works and what doesn't, and what we like doing and stuff like that. And then um, through college, we really just started doing a lot of like everything, commercials, weddings, like everything, um, short films, whenever we could. And then it wasn't until like the past year we started doing feature films like full time, like that was taking over more of our time than commercials. So. And, and when you get on sets, it's just bigger sets, bigger problems, you know, more money involved and stuff. And, um, when, and we've, after doing it, you know, we've been out of high school for like 10 years now. So it's like, we've been, yeah, it's like seven, six years, six years, but like, <laughs> I, was, I, was I like, mean, I haven't even okay, been out of high yeah, school for 10 uh, years. We've been out of high school for like six years, but like, I'm an old man. Yeah. I'm an old man, Haley. Six years. <laughs> but anyways, like we, since eighth grade, that's been almost like ten years. Twenty third. So at a middle school, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 School, I love, I love how filmmakers, <laughs> our perception of time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why it's like you, you'll be talking. I've been, to I've been on this set three years. <laughs> Literally. Like 100, day day seven. One hundred and fifteen yeah, grains seven. felt like yeah. a year. It was five yeah. weeks. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. like, what? What is life? But yeah, there were just figuring out how we like to work together now it's like we must not even need to talk we just know what we're thinking oh you've so you've now hit that like what is it telekinetic or yes. telepathic we, we it's so weird each other anymore just... you do the what is it that uh <laughs> the, every time it's like the eyebrow yeah yeah mm -hmm. uh, that was a on that 70 show they did that anyway probably shouldn't uh give that 70 show uh too much praise <laughs> it's a good show <laughs> uh so Haley obviously Austin mentioned you kind of were helping on the acting side. So what drew you to then get behind the camera? I never, ever, 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 ever was an actor. I was always behind the camera. <laughs> I kind of reason I did acting was because he asked and I liked him. So, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Like, like I always started with doing like camera stuff with my friends and doing our own short films. When I found out he did short films, I was like, Oh, that's kind of funny. Yeah. Alright. Um yeah. So I never was an actor. I don't think I'll ever be an actor. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> well what um uh, sorry I'm I'm putting my water down everybody. Uh what is the like question? <laughs> Do you have a question? <laughs> Cuz I'll keep, I'll keep coming with it. Yeah. Uh what drove you to then want to be the one that is you know directing that photography as the t as literally the term is <laughs> directing what is being put in the scene uh in the visuals well first off let's take a step back can you guys just talk about like what are your guys typical roles on on set how's that partnership well i talked about that but okay. oh you did i was sorry i mean dealing with sound yeah, yeah just yeah, to yeah. clarify I'm, yeah. normally she's the director of photography and i direct but we okay. equally 
or like she equally directs as much as I am a director of photography. So we're kind of doing both. But okay, got it. She's definitely way better at cameras and lighting and all that than, than I am. Um, and then I, I've always been drawn to working with the actors and stuff and just communicating with department heads and all Very that cool. stuff. So, yeah. Did that clarify for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good now. <laughs> okay, cool. Go ahead. You can move on. All right. Uh, so Haley, back to you. What was like the drive for you to want to be in control, uh, in control of that, or direct? Mm -hmm. You know what you see, um, in the in the picture. Um. Well, it probably started when I was younger, just doing short films, and I guess it's like the really being drawn to storytelling and just every aspect of the camera. Really, it. I just love it. It. So it romanticizes my life when I use the camera. <laughs> I love it. I think also you're, it, you're yeah. just like, that's where your natural talents are too, you know? And you, you've kind of figured that out. So. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, obviously, if Austin's saying that, you can kind of see why I think the pairing might work well in that aspect is the reliability that you can have in terms of that, that nonverbal communication you guys were talking about. So kind of the same question to you, Austin, what was it that, you know, if Haley went to be behind the camera side more often, what was your draw? You know, you mentioned working with actors, but what was your draw to want to be, you know, trying to pull this, this emotion or this performance from them? Um, well, the first off, first off, I, I love cameras and stuff. I'm kind of a camera nerd, so I, I wanted to do that too, but as like the sets kind of got bigger i was like can't really focus on this because it's taking me taking me away from um like working with the performance of the actors and getting that out of them um side note like just that's kind of where i fit and yeah. I, I found myself just naturally like you know doing that and i'm like okay I kind of like this and it's kind of a challenge too, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, every set's got its own challenges and I think I like that. Well, AK, you're kind of, you, you're kind of in that same boat of like, obviously you've been, you've moved towards being directing more, but obviously you've DP as well and you, and you do DP. Mm -hmm. So what's kind of been in that same boat? I, I like it, it, maybe just because you've been, you've done it before, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're, I don't know how to say like you're you're now steps ahead, I guess, in terms of you did DP, but now you've been doing more. Directing. I've played with cameras, guys. <laughs> He's also a camera nerd. If yeah. you want to call it that. Yeah. yeah. No, I I um I actually start my first my jobs in the industry starting out like paid work. It was uh, lighting. Started out and like it was doing, you know, like most people, PA gaffing, um, and then um, like camera operator stuff. Then kind of then I started getting hired on to be like the DP where maybe I had like a few crew members underneath me, even though that whole time <clears throat> I started as an actor when I was 11. Um, and then during that whole time, um, after going to film school, I wanted to be a director, but I just wasn't getting, um, those paid positions. I wasn't getting, you know, because a lot of times the director is one of the first people on the crew side to be hired. So it was like, um, yeah. you know, so then, you know, my journey was, uh, having my own production company to ensure that I could be the director. <laughs> um, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, secret chip, secret sauce. Owner and founder of Kiara Pictures, yeah. everyone. <laughs> yeah. So I think, yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, um, it takes a really, really long time, um, to, um, I, you know, a, being a director is really I, in many ways, I think like a behind you're a behind the scenes actor. Like you really, it. I don't want to say it's a popularity contest, but it you. It's so much of getting the job is is who you know and networking mm -hmm. yeah. and um, it's trust. I would say that's like your that's your currency in directing is is having trust within your market. So for sure, but um. But yeah, back to your, you know, back to your point on um, uh, the challenges as an indie filmmaker. Um, it's anytime as a as a director, 
you can have a crew where you can just hyper focus on directing and you're not having to do lighting or you know mix sound <laughs> you know um you can you you know you can it helps it you'll it you'll be a better you know yeah. director oh, ha yeah. having oh, less yeah. m you know production stuff to worry it's about you could just focus sure. on on your talent it's one less hat i mean that's why uh i mean making a film is definitely a, a, a team effort mm -hmm. uh, yeah. especially and i mean being the director and dp uh being on the same page is, I think, very key yeah. to making it a successful vision. Uh, and obviously, I think that kind of just extends that you guys are. <laughs> it's it's like the you're you know your partners on and off the field, mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. you know. So that being said, is it ever like do you do you have like a rule of like you know don't take work home kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Or like creative conversations that happen on set don't get brought home because you need that like you need a break. Or is there kind of just like anytime you know like yeah you know, I don't want to talk about this anymore right I now. Mean, or... <laughs> I guess it's there's different periods of our life. Like for a couple months ago, we were in the depths of writing our feature, mm -hmm. so all we talked about was writing and the story and like I'd be asleep at night and I'd be like oh my god I gotta write this <laughs> yes. down like this is genius and then he'd be like what the heck like go to sleep it kind of consumes you I mean when you're does. when you're passionate yeah. about something I mean it, it takes over your whole life um but I mean there's also like you know the on set stuff that you know we talk about but it's like yeah. when we come home we're kind of gonna be like yeah. All right. We right. talked enough about <laughs> yeah. set yeah. drama. And, oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> you need that. Yeah. You need that. Like a little bit of separation. So. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, I definitely on the con the consumption level or the the it consuming you. I mean, obviously that that's kind of like, I think any film you do that kind of happens. But you kind of had that with 115 grains, right? In terms of like you got to be all in it. I mean, you were also producing and. No, don't give a shit about your movies, guys. <laughs> no, but you, you got to like focus, right? You go. <laughs> I mean, we've seen films with directors that don't seem to care about the product. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, obviously, yeah. My words have meaning, AK. Yeah. No, I. I mean, it's um, it's always um, I, I'll never forget. I had a uh, I had a feature film experience. Um, uh, it was God. What was it like four years ago? And I was a Brought on as a steady cam op, because um, I was like one of a few people that I knew that had the new like Ronin Pro rig that the the R two and mm -hmm. so I got brought on and and then there was this first time feature film director um, I'm not going to mention his name um, but I was really um, we were all really concerned so for me my pre production process I. Um, and it's something I found, I don't know, I don't know of, personally, I don't know of an in-person director that storyboards every frame of their movie. Like, I, I storyboard every project. Um, it's very time-consuming consuming and tedious. Um, but on this particular set, they barely had a shot list. And it was like Love a $250,000 budgeted film. Mm. And uh, by day, I think three we were like eight pages behind and it just it really bothered me um and in the director you know had a very confident presence and but he had no idea what he was doing he i can i can fundamentally say and i can look at that film and i can say and, and then they they were in post-production and they had to do reshoots it was in post-production i think for almost two years and it's like that's <laughs> why they had so many problems because you had a director that um, didn't, you know, I, I think, um, didn't either, I don't know the guy on a personal level, either he didn't know what to do or he just didn't give a shit. And it really, as a, as a director that wants to win Oscars one day, um, I do anything that I can learn along this journey, um, to, help the story if that means you know a little bit more planning or you know a, a a better communication technique to pull out better performances or or um the best out of your your crew anything that i can pick up um i'm all for and so it does it just naturally bothers me when i'm on a set 
and people don't it just it they don't um i mean you could say they don't work hard but they just don't they don't deeply care about their reputation and the 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 level of craftsmanship that goes into whatever the role is it really really bothers me so <clears throat> ditto yes yeah ditto. yeah i get that <laughs> what yep. he said yep yeah um and kind of like, I mean, we all know like directing and and being a director of photography is, is definitely difficult. And like you talk about, like it will consume you at times mm -hmm. to be to be good at it. You know, I think at some point you have to you, you are putting a lot of you into it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know we have to find that balance, work life balance at, on a personal level, but obviously work life balance in relationships but speaking on directing, um, Austin, what do you think the the hardest part of directing is? Um, whether it's you think overall or for you personally, not that it's your like something you struggle with, but just yeah. something you're like, yeah, it's definitely you have to take more time with it or patience with it, etc. There's so many like levels to directing, but um, well, I feel like I'm where I'm at right now. The hardest part is. I mean, I'm, I'm still like a no name director. So when you're going to financiers or investors and stuff, trying to, you know, convince them and, and, and gain their trust to give you a certain amount of money to get your budget level, to get your film produced. Uh, I feel like that's a hard thing when, when you're still in that indie, like you haven't had a film with great success, you know, yeah. you're, you're trying to get people to, um, trust you like going back to what you were saying. It's all about trust. Yeah. No, it's what you just said is probably, if not the biggest hurdle a filmmaker will ever face is getting that first yeah. feature film financed. Um, for, you know, uh, I've done two features, guys, if you don't know. Congrats, um, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah. And, um, you know, the first one was self-funded, split up. You know, it was about $20,000, Mind Heist. Everybody on crew, it was during the 2020 pandemic. Um, everybody was working, uh, you know, for deferred. It was all homies. No one was working at that time. We went and shot it in uh, New Mexico. And then I invited, we, you know, edited the film, had a private screener and invited um, the uh, financier of 115 grains, which ended up being $275,000 budget um, to build that trust. And, you know, when, when, uh, when I get asked that question, how did you do it? I'm like, it took me 15 years. Hmm. Um, I wrote my first feature when I, uh, feature length script when I was 18 and, um, uh, 115 grains was the, is the, is the 17th feature film that I've, um, I co-wrote, um, been a part of. So, you know, when, and I know plenty of people that found that success, got finance way sooner than I did. Um, but I'm really proud. I'm really proud of my first feature before my first feature. I did eight shorts, uh, proof of concept TV pilot. You know, I'm glad that I waited, um, and really focused on the craft. So my first feature, I like, I don't think, I don't think it's the greatest thing in the world. I don't think it's, I don't think either one of the films I've done is a blockbuster because we didn't have the budget or, and I don't think it's a master class in filmmaking. Um, because I think that takes decades to get to that level as a director. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it looks like shit compared to <laughs> a lot of first first feature films that I've seen. And then my second feature film was a lot of people watched it and they're like, wow, this was sizably better. And I was like, well, because we had a, like some we had a, we had a little budget, you know, we had a, we had a budget to to pay people, you know, to afford props, you know, to, to ha get locations you know, to get professional actors. Um, <clears throat> so You're going a little Nicholas Cage there for a second. <laughs> yeah. Some professional actors. <laughs> yeah. So, but it was, it's, it's, oh, it, man. it took me 15 years to get my first feature, uh, finance. Wow. You know, and that's, so, that's something I want to talk about is like, I feel like, I mean, me personally, I feel like a lot of people too, they get in this industry and they're like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I want to be a director. I want to, I want to do this. I want to, they get like they they're so excited and they they love movies which were big movie buffs too but like you you kind of expect 
oh, maybe a year or two, and then I can start directing films. I, like, you're going to be in it. But it's really about the journey. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's your whole life you're doing this. You're you're still pursuing, trying to make get your vision out there and mm -hmm. tell your stories. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's no, crazy. No, it definitely... Yeah, yeah, it's it's. If I if I could go back in time, I probably would have quit. <laughs> I'd be like, no. Yeah, I don't. you're probably like I've come too far now. I'm, well, I'm in it. Like, there's yeah. no way. I actually had, uh, so I was on a set recently where the this person was like, "Yeah, I'm actually trying to like." <laughs> he literally said, "He's like, I've tried to get out of this industry like four times." Yeah, and he's like, it just keeps pulling me back in. <laughs> and I was like, what? Like, I okay. Like, I wonder what your experience has been like. But it does. I mean, if you're not ready for it in in, in some capacity, it, you can get chewed up and spit out. Especially yeah. when you go to these 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 markets that'll just like, you know, you re you really have. Yeah. It's it's been nothing but love that has kept me. Um, you know, as a kid, I've I loved watching movies. Um, and I'm very pop culture. Um, I love watching uh, foreign films, but I but I'm pop culture in the sense that if you're not winning Oscars, if you're not critically acclaimed, I don't really care about your 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 fan. And that's just because it's a personal goal of mine to create a level of artistry that is appreciated by other high level, you know, uh, hopefully big budget filmmakers. You know, so I I um I. I really try and every movie that I go into, it's like, how can I make this as commercial as, as possible to be, you know, I nominated for an Oscar. Like I think in, in terms of, and that's just my kind of genre of filmmaking, but I respect all filmmaking, yeah. you know, across the board. I think but that's a good, good thing though. Yeah. Good save there at the end there. <laughs> I, I, think, respect, I respect all filmmakers. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of indie filmmakers, they don't have that side of them and they, they're just so high art it's like yeah this is so like this is There's what no i want to do they don't think about the other side of it or even the business side of it you, i mean you're thinking like all right do people actually want to watch this i mean yeah. what you know well, i want to make i, I want to make a lot of money yeah i want i mean like <laughs> i mean that's really you, you know I, it's um you know Same. film yeah i want to make i want to be i you want to have i want to have the it's not i'm um i don't consider myself superficial or or shallow but yeah. i, I want to be able to um have the resources to live comfortably um yeah. do fun things with the people that i love and and also invest in in um you know um, passing the the torch to 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 other I mean like my ultimate dream has been you know to get to a point where you know I can call up Spielberg or or call up the the Spielberg yeah. or the Villeneuve or the Nolan of the modern times and be like hey guys I'm so I'm working on this this new film give it to me straight am I fucking crazy <laughs> or is this a great idea and you know to to have that kind of camaraderie yeah. with other leaders um and i've found that um here in florida um we just you know because of varying things going on it's really hard to find that level of those those same pistons firing off yeah. like i want to really really work hard my reputation really matters i want to make a lot of money with this film like we gotta you know focus on making it you know, commercial, but then also, um, I, I, it's rare for me to find all of those boxes check with talent here in Florida. Not to say that, you know, I don't think that it, I, I they can't be inspired. Um, but I just, um, I, I'm a big advocate of if you're not going to go for greatness, like the highest high level of, of a uh, activity like why are you why are you doing it right. like it's just You're like, not gonna go like for gold i don't do this at, yeah you. i don't do this as a, like for me this isn't a hobby it's a job it's a job and um it's a job i'm very passionate about mm -hmm. um but it is a business um so um i agree 100 percent with everything yeah. you said like, yeah. to the t all right so uh you as a camera nerd uh 
why is it that cameras stop at like 25 minutes? <laughs> It's because if, I mean, if you sell a camera that has a, it's the 25 minutes. If it goes over that, it's considered a professional video camera. And there's these like, are thir- these are 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. 25, 30 minutes or okay. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So if it goes over that, it has to be like in the same category as like an FS7 or something. And there's like more interesting or something wow. like so that. So that one, you're professional. Your other two are that bitches. One's professional. Basic, yes. basic cameras. But AK respects. I, res- of, I respect, of, I respect, <laughs> I respect you, Sony. So, uh, Haley, question for you. Yeah. Um, we've kind of talked about, <clears throat> you know, the attributes of directing and the difficulties of directing and also director photography, but to directing <clears throat> for DP specifically, what do you think most DPs lack when it's, so- uh, solid question. Solid mm-hmm. question. When, when it's, whether it's creating a scene yep. or if it's just directing you know what visually what's happening in a scene it's great you asked this we were just on a feature and i was just supposed to be the gaffer and i ended up dp'ing it all because it, yeah it was not a clap it was a it was <laughs> it was a mess it was all a mess but i i'm just thinking of that person and people that i've worked with it there's a lot that goes into DP and I don't think a lot of people take the time to learn it and you can learn it. If you go on sets and stuff, there's a lot of pre-production that goes into DP a lot of shot listing. Like you're saying, um, learning how to light in a second, because when there's a situation, when you, it's something new, the director comes up with a new scene, you have to know, all right, what, what do I need to do to light this, to make it feel the way that he wants it to feel or, you know, <laughs> so yeah just being prepared before being on set what? and yeah oh no sorry Dude. and learn and learning like how different shots make you feel a certain way that's all dp and is is feeling. hilarious because that was literally my next question okay of like how how do you think lighting and composition mm-hmm. is used like what are the most important aspects of lighting and composition to make us feel something when it for a film you know as a dp mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, oh, you want me to give me a, give you a whole master class? I like, <laughs> no, like, like if it's, if, uh, like how, how does the lighting and composition yeah. make us feel something, right? Cause you, yeah. you say like, that's, that's important yeah. and you got to be able to kind of come up with okay. that yeah, and make that choice, you know, okay. very quickly, especially mm-hmm. if the director throws something new at you. Yep. So how do you kind of, is there like quick, you know, quick not a template to go to yeah something yeah. you kind of rely on there really you. is like when you look at the best dps in the world they have they have a very specific lighting model for every single movie that they use a lot and if you start to learn it you can kind of see like like i guess there's like three three elements knowing like if it's gonna be like high key or low key for a scene and like what type of movie it's going to be or like the composition do you want him to feel spaced in and not and like i guess each scene you can change it but like each movie also is it's connected in a way so kind of knowing what the movie is what the story is what are the characters feeling that's why i kind of like have started dipping into directing more which i don't think you know about recently but no we've started directing together so cool breaking, yeah. breaking news breaking yeah news. Breaking breaking news. News. <laughs> no no i but it's just because like we i've been learning more about cinephiliacs first has it here <laughs> everyone no i uh i mean i've worked with you guys on sets before and seeing it working with you guys i i was always leaning towards i was like i wonder if they'll ever try co-directing mm-hmm. um because yep. of the because of what you both bring to to a production in terms of the thoughts. I think it's something that we kind of just realized in the past year or two is yeah. like, we pretty much do co-direct, co-DP. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know it's I been. Mean, you know. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Well, like, that's why I was like, you kind of did it already. So now, yeah. uh, now we're just officially calling it. Yeah. <laughs> it's official. It's official. <laughs> oh, no. Now they're about, they're about, to, they're about to jump up because they're going to just be on fire now because they're getting best of both worlds. It's going to be crazy, AK. I'm excited about it. Why don't you? Why don't you ever want to co-direct? Hmm. I don't. I haven't found a director I respect enough to 
to mm-hmm. co yeah. co co direct. I yeah. I um and I don't know and 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 the projects that I have directed, I've I feel sacrificed so much for those stories yeah. that I don't want to share that that mantle yep. with um with any it's a very it's a it's a it's selfish there's selfish reasons um but you know i i wouldn't say i'm not open to it if i if i met somebody that you know or i was hired and i had to work with somebody um and it was just a an opportunity i i didn't want to miss out on then i would try and make that work um i think in your guys situation being such a tight you know the fact that you guys have a romantic um relationship the fact that you guys spend so much time together i think that there's a lot of unity in your voice Mm -hmm. but um you notice what i've like i said i'm very much a a high level um observer of of the industry and i try and reverse engineer from like top down and looking at um, partnerships that are have been successful in their their marrying, like the Cohen brothers, they're either their brothers, uh, Nolan, mm-hmm. uh, Christopher Nolan, and Jonathan, screenwriter. You know, um, so I think in order to have a very unified voice in a co-directing partnership, you have to be very close um mm-hmm. on a personal level yeah. with 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 that director i don't know of i'm sure there are i'm sure there's yeah that's definitely loud we're gonna want to wait for that fighter <laughs> fighter jet guys <laughs> i'm hearing that bad boy hold for sound <laughs> um i don't I, i'm sure there i'm sure there are instances of uh, co-directors that barely knew each other that did a great job on an indie level, but I don't watch your, your you know, I, I, I don't watch those. It's not, I just don't have the time, guys. Um, yeah, I, 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 there's, I mean, it, I barely have enough time to watch the films that are critically acclaimed, um, you know, to watch. The, and, you know, I, I heard, I think it was last year, or the year before, there was literally a million feature films made worldwide like it was something like oh like a little over a million and when you think about that amount like 90 minutes like around that average averaging and 90 minutes around a million of them you know these are docs fiction i mean but still i mean like how i can't i when i think of how many movies i've watched in my lifetime like probably probably several thousand like how do you watch what a million what there's no way there's no there's no way you sound like the turkey from uh, Chicken Little. Yes. <laughs> Overload. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, I mean, when you think about those numbers, for sure, I mean, it's like, it's like, how, how do you then Im- make an impact into that? You know. Well, most of them are, you know, I would. Are, most of them yeah. are are not notable, yeah, probably, yeah, yeah. at all. Um, at, well, here's another Snapple fun fact. If you've made Snapple. one feature, Snapple. If, is this like? Is this a fun fact that you when you open up the Snapple? Yeah, off the Snapple, Snapple fun fact. What well, this is something like older people that were you know in their thirty. I know you're still in your twenties, so. But back back in my day, Snapple fun fact was a cool thing. <laughs> um, and then I heard now. Well, there's apparently some uh, PC thing with it. You can't say Snapple fun fact because of some shitty business that Snapple was involved in. So shame on you. But so anyway, I just want to say we're not sponsored by. Snapple. We are not a proponent of whatever went down but snapple fun fact um (laughs) snapple fun fact uh if you've made one feature film you're in the top 10 percent of filmmakers if you've made two or more you're in top one percent so point being most people after and these are directors like the filmmaker these aren't you know below the line um because it's so hard as a filmmaker to put together you know, financing um, and make it through that that process. A lot of filmmakers, they do one movie and they're like, that was that was, you know, I'm glad I had the experience, but never mm-hmm. again. Yeah. And or they just can't, you know, get pull it, pull it together. I mean, it's yeah. it's uh, well, I think once you do it's that, a war zone. Yeah. You do that first movie, you learn a lot and you're going to learn whether you can stick yeah. in it. 
and be a director for films or not. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if and it's you know you find out, uh, which is good. Uh, you know before you, well, you know. <laughs> the turn the turnover rate in this yeah. business is Asta- I, yeah. It's a it's a it's astounding. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, next topic. I'll do what you did in the first episode and be like, pause. You did that, and I was like, why are we? You can edit that out. But it was funny. Right? You did like a visual. You were like, you should have done P, but you did. Oh no 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 no! I did pause because the the I know what you're saying. No, Go I know. Yeah. I'm saying I know what you yeah. were doing it for. Yeah. But I'm saying okay. we don't have to have this conversation right now. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? Uh, so obviously you guys mentioned you, uh, have actually shot on film. Um, and so I wanted to ask what was, what is a challenge shooting on film that's different than the digital, you know? And I know we kind of know like, you know, like, well, obviously you gotta load the film in, you gotta deal with those things, Mm -hmm. but what was, what was something that maybe people wouldn't expect if they were going to work on film for the first time that, you know, no one really talks about that was maybe more challenging than than you expected well i want to say the benefits of it so then people want to shoot on a film yeah <laughs> no. No, sure, go, no no sure, sure. <laughs> no. um t- there's a lot of it's it's very different lighting that you have to do um you have to be very precise with your lighting and if it's not precise, then it can totally ruin your whole film and waste you a lot of money. So that's probably the biggest setback that was kind of scared us a lot. Um, but. So what were the benefits? Like you talked about the benefits. Yeah. So what were the, some things that you were like, I, I want to f- do work with film again yeah. in mm-hmm. the future. Yeah. And what drew, drew it to you in the first place? You know, the love yeah. of it. So I recently I'll, I'll say this there's a caption from the president of kodak he posted a picture and he said all of like the top shows and movies were all filmed on film and he was saying everyone that went to him and was like hey i want to shoot on film but then never did he never heard from them again so, mm. and i was like hmm, that's interesting and then he was like but the people that did shoot on film they were in the industry and they stayed in the industry and I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, that is. Yeah. That the president said that. So I, I think about that a lot in my bed. I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it just lives <laughs> no. in your head. Right. I just free. No, it really it does. It no, that, that is really a very does. interesting, a very interesting statement. Yeah. So from now on, we do want to shoot on like our story, your personal yes. ones, yeah. the ones you guys want to make, you yes. want to do on film. Yeah. Yes. Cause I know you guys did go kind of, I mean, you had gone back and forth. That's why you wanted to shoot on film. One mm-hmm. of the reasons, obviously, yeah. out of, I'm sure, many uh, that you wanted to shoot on film in the first place. Yeah. But I knew you were kind of going back and forth on, does it work for you and the stories you guys are wanting to tell in that medium? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so obviously it sounds like... It does. You, yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. And um, yeah. is there any specific reason i guess into why you kind of like were like yes i mean obviously yeah. the statement you said f- yeah from well, the president of kodak but anything yeah. like that was like that locked it in that you're like no our personal projects we want to do on film well short and simple the director of photography from marriage story which was shot on film he said it and it, it kind of changed my perspective on film too is like everybody every filmmaker is trying to get the cinematic look the film look the classic movie look the easiest way to do that is shoot on film because that's mm-hmm. how the movie started is by shooting on film and everything we grew up watching was on film. Not until like, I think 2010 mm-hmm. things started shifting to digital, digital. So every movie back then was filming. Our, our eyes are kind of like used to that look. And there's also so many, like no camera yet has come close to the, like even like the dynamic range of film. Like film is so like, crazy in that aspect and and it's kind of future proofed it's when you shoot like uh 35 you that's like 6k you can scan it up to 6k um and imax is like i want to say like i think it was like 12 or 15k worth of detail in wow. there so it's future proof it like if you make your movie it, it can always be upscaled as long as the film's preserved um but there's so, i mean it's organic, you know. It makes you it feel just, something. Yeah. When you watch a movie on film. Um, 
you may not think it, but like yeah. when you when you watch it, you like in the back of your head, you're like, this feels. I I did a test actually, um, with my friend. You know her, Jesse. Yeah. She we were watching this movie. It was on sixteen millimeter film, and I was just kind of waiting because it's definitely this movie. You can tell it has a feeling of like it was in the sixties, and but it was made recently. And she was like. What makes it look like that? It, it feels old. This was recent, right? And I'm like, yes, yeah, that's film. Like it, it's just it feels so raw, and it's she's yeah, not in the film industry. Not in the film industry at all. She just knew it, and so that was kind of my test because I played that kind of to do that, and I didn't mention it at all, like about why we were watching it or anything. So, yeah, gives you a feeling. What are your thoughts on that, AK? I yeah, mean, what I, are your thoughts? You're, you've you've obviously worked on a lot of digital cameras. I, so so. I, I actually, um, um, last time I worked on film was in film school with a 16 millimeter Bolex shot a, a oh, docu- yeah. documentary. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, with it. Um, and the main, I, I, um, I used to want to shoot on it more. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm once again, very high high i i like working with the latest tech yeah. technology I so i that. so i am pro yeah. pro digital and yeah and my my future aspiration is pro digital. Yeah. yeah i can't believe you're pro digital. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um so my my future aspiration is to have like whatever the, the like i don't want to have um like i think red cameras are great um but my next camera cinema camera i really want to have an airy um the the, well whatever's the latest one 35 Uh, yeah the 35 now but oh yeah the the rex 35 like how many stops uh digital range it has now dynamic range i mean i think it's like 19 yeah 18 i think that's the only camera that's come close to film's dynamic range yeah yeah so crazy so um you know I support I, I, you. Yeah, I yeah I I think film <laughs> is respects you as a filmmaker. I, yeah, I think film is. I mean, film is great. Um, I agree with all your guys' points. How it's 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 been it's interesting how technology has been chasing that aesthetic for yeah. for so long. Um, and I think that certain stories are more applicable to the film look versus the digital look. Um, yeah. I, yeah. But. Uh, I think it's. I also, in terms of technology, need a cell phone charger, so <laughs> our future talent that I brought can get in touch with me. So, because right now I'm dead, I'm dead skipping. Gotcha. What kind of charger? I have an iPhone. Again. Well. <laughs> I'm I'm pop culture. <laughs> Android baby. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, I think either way, like it's so cool with film being movies, like it's art, right? And the way we've talked about it with just between the differences of shooting on film and shooting on digital is like the different mediums you can use. Like it's like a different, using a different paint for the, on your canvas, you know, or, or the different, whatever, or switch that, whatever you want to say, but it goes to show that depending on how you want to tell your story, the way you want to tell it, you're going to choose the medium and the tools you want to do it with. And it's going to create either way, whatever vision you have, it's going to create something, Mm -hmm. which is, I think for me, one of the most high like, high quality reasons that I'm in this industry in the first place is because it's I always live by the quote of Orson Welles which was uh, making movie is like painting with an army um, and I, th- I think that's like to the point the simplest way to describe filmmaking to me yeah so anyway just one of the it's one of my favorite quotes guys just saying it's awesome uh, good for you Dan thank you Good oh my theme. gosh you should, it's you. a really great quote it's amazing yeah. i like is you, it on your wall yeah well you like stay up at night thinking about the president of Kodak code you should, quote you should I, tattoo it right here in your neck yeah well, i was actually gonna do it on the inside Orson of my lips. Lips. It was oh my god it's gonna be painting with an army yeah you know like all around uh so i want to talk about the famous 180 rule because, okay because because okay. i i know with them i've had conversations with them where we usually meet people out of film school Let's or, break or, this motherfucker. or people yeah. following, you know, following what they've learned, right? When they're first yeah. into it, it's, you follow the 180 rule, right? And I know with you guys, there's been multiple times where it's like, like, we're like, <laughs> we're like it doesn't matter, you know, Wait, in, in this instance. And uh, I just wanted to hear your thoughts on like, for all, you know, briefly, the three of you, like why, whether it's 
to follow the 180 rule or when do you think it's okay to break it, you know? And obviously everyone always talks about the shining in that, in that <laughs> bathroom yeah. scene. Right. Um, whether why it worked there, or why it didn't work, right? I think some people yeah. some people argue that. Uh, but anyway, we guys... just we just recently watched a movie called Heat, and they intentionally break it in almost every scene. Now I do think the rules there. This for is the a one reason. with uh, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. Yeah, that's it's a, like it's everybody. Robert De Niro. Uh, yeah, Niro. That's a great. That's a great. Film. Yeah. yeah, it's just a, an awesome. Film, yeah, it's a great know? film. But um, they do this dolly shot where they start the scene behind. Every scene has it. And then kind of when the actors oh. start conversing, there's a point. Where they switch it and they break it. It's and it, right when it, they kind of start yeah. connecting. Yes, it changes the how dynamic. you feel. Yeah. Now the 180 rule is there for a reason, you know, so people don't get lost or confused. But if you know how how it works and how to use it to make people feel something, that's a good thing. I feel like maybe I, I didn't go to film school, but maybe film school maybe emphasizes that the 180 rule is like yeah. not to be broken. I don't know if they tell you oh you should use this and then break it i don't i don't know what they say in film school our cinema um glenn glenn peck uh our cinematography professor mm -hmm. he was kind of a wild he was always like smoking a cigarette he, you know it was always, oh, so like, it's cool yeah he was always like <laughs> this austin song. wants to smoke yeah yeah, he, yeah he, that's he, my goal this yeah year. he had like long blonde hair he and he broke the 180 rule for sure and and he was like you know, he'd be. I guarantee. I can. I can hear him. Like you break that. You know, you <laughs> just break that fucker. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, uh, he he was kind of like. Um, you 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 one eighty that. He shit. was like. I mean, he was like the embodiment of Matthew McConaughey and True Detectives. He's like, look, man, if you're you're just <laughs> with you the know, long hair, but, but yeah, long blonde hair and had like the beard and. Um, so, um, but our other professors were very like you know they harped on it. I think it's. Yeah. I think you, as a filmmaker, um, with r techniques or principles, I think you need to fundamentally know them yes. mm -hmm. before yeah. you oh, yeah. f before you're comfortable enough to take those creative liberties. Because exactly. I mean, the purpose yeah. of the 180 to rule is is so the viewer, like you said, don't yeah. they spatially don't get confused. Yeah. Um, but stylistically, you know, it it, it it limit it limits you. Uh, yeah. If you just always stick to it, because um, I hate when we get on set and we're working with this DP, and they're like, oh, "Does this break the 180 rule?" And we sit there and try to decide if it breaks the 180 rule. I'm like, D "I mean, no, it doesn't. But if you want to, and that's your intent, go ahead." Yeah. And it's almost like I have to tell them that. So. Yeah. And all the film school kids. It's a, it's on a pet set. theme of ours. They're like, oh my gosh, this is They're breaking. Like, oh my god, I'm breaking the 180. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly <laughs> like that. Oh my god, this is not what I want. You know what I mean? Like, and you're like, no, it's, it's not. Like, hey, you don't calm even... <laughs> down, have a bottle of water. <laughs> it is yeah. a pet peeve of ours. It really, that is a big pet peeve of ours. <laughs> big. <laughs> Dan knows. That's, that's why, why he that's brought, why it brought it up. up. That's why we're talking about it. Because right? I, I mean, it's a good thing to talk about too. Yeah. I it just it happens all the time um, with new <laughs> with new people on set for sure. Um, so one of the last uh, main topics um, is, and we can, this is going to be very brief. Um, do you think motion capture performances should be up for award nominations? Because obviously Avatar just came back. And that would be, I mean, that's that's motion capture, you know, on, on that level. So, like, well, that, that's, I mean, that's grouped in with One. like stunts. Stunts deserve. Yeah. I mean, like it's yes, like people, any any department deserves to have an on an offer, but they don't do it because yeah. of of time. Mm -hmm. You know, it just it it takes up. So yeah, I mean, out of fairness. Fairness, yes, but out of the business side of it, like, you know, it, and then historically you're going up against that. Um, so, yes. Oh, wait, yes. can I ask a question really quick? Yeah. What What do you think makes an Oscar movie? Because you said that's your goal. So what What makes everything all at once an Oscar movie? Because there was movie? a lot of movies this year that didn't get any yeah. nominations that really should have. Yeah, well, so it's very... It, it, an Oscar movie, really, it has... I don't... I think... You know, it's creating something that is commercial, um, and and by that I mean a certain budget, right? Like mm -hmm. there are, if if you were to do, I don't know, a, a breakdown of 
the last 20 years, you would see like a certain kind of a, a minimum. They're all multi-million. Yeah. They're all, oh, million, yeah. they're all multi-million dollar pictures. Mm-hmm. So there's a certain commercial financial aspect to them. Um, but then there's a lot of, it's very political where, you know, the, um, the uh, committee that's, that's a part of voting for nominating. And I think that's, that's what I mean by it. It's, you know, creating work with your peers that they, you're, res- you're respected enough and well-received, you know, where to have that love from other, um, you know, film, filmmakers, you know, to say you, that they're good. Them, they're like everybody in the whole Oscar room. They're all good. They're all very, very talented, mm-hmm. but to get to the level where, you know, you're, you know, you're able to win and people love you enough that you're nominated and then you get enough votes to be like, you know, honestly, let's give it to, you know, Spielberg or let's, you know, and I think that that's, you know, so for me, storytelling at the very, very core, um, it is uh, number one, creating stories that mean something to you. And then number two, creating stories that mean something to other people. And and out of every, of out of any type of person that I would cherish their admiration, it's other people that really really love um, mastery in in filmmaking. Like I want their favor over, you know, because the average person they don't really know they can't break down what a good film what what great filmmaking is. And so mm-hmm. for me. Like I want, I want Spielberg to say, "Okay, good job." That was honestly mm-hmm. like that was that like I want those types of people to. Uh, to I want to strike a chord with yeah. with those people because if like if I can affect the best of the best, and um, then I then I feel like, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I've uh, competed on a very elite level to win over the hearts of people that are already very hyper focused on the craft. Yeah. So I care about those people first and then everybody else of the, you know. That's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> All right guys, we're gonna go move on to one of our segments called the Cinephilia X Movie Club. Yeah, we may have to do another so go ahead. Yeah, okay. we got like... uh so what the this segment is is you think will recommend a movie that you've seen in the last ninety days and you try to say one sentence as to why uh, people should watch it. So, uh, do you do you guys need a minute to think about a movie? Yeah. Okay. Do you have one? Right. Yeah. One? So I'll go with Living. Um, and oh, yeah. it's oh, uh, be li- new li- ones, man. Oh, I got to give a new one every time. You don't well, have I don't to. watch. Yeah, I'm prepared. Well, I'll, I'll just say Living. I said in the last episode, guys. Um, but it 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 it's in short, it's about smelling the roses along the way. Um, it was very well done. Um, and uh, is a must watch. Why should people watch it? it? Oh, that's. Wow, it's in it's in movie theater movie theaters right now. So uh, Bill Nye was nominated uh, for best actor for the Oscar. Bill yeah. Nye the science guy? No, not Bill Nye. It's, <laughs> okay, a, it's, I'm a, it's a different. That's actor. the joke. I oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, why should people watch it? One sentence. I just told you because it's you great. Said smell the roses. You, well, you it's a, just... it's a, it's a it's a film about appreciating life and coming to terms with end of life as you're oh, as you're an elderly person. Uh, also, it was directed by Oliver Hermanis. Okay. Uh, do you guys have one? I, I, yeah. I can go next. Well, I think ours to. is the same. Okay. So do you sit down. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, uh, Haley. Uh, did you have a movie? Oh, you are okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, guys. So my movie uh, that I, it's not one I watched recently, but it I was one I was telling you about uh, a little bit ago, and I re- now remember the title, and it's called Instructions Not Included. And it uh, features um, Eugenio De- Debez, I think is how you say his name. Uh, he was just in that Hulu one, The Valet. Yeah, I met him in Sundance. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, did. yeah. So, he was super nice. Cool. Yeah. So I stopped in the street and I was like, "Hey, I see your." And he was like, "Oh, thank you so much." His eyes, like you know, like you know, it was his, his accent. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I respect you as a filmmaker. Um... <laughs> No, it's just the, the choices you make. Uh, it was good. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I did that accent was really good for like yeah. what you did on the spot. Was it? No, but like oh. good in terms of entertaining. <laughs> anyway, so the movie's called Instructions Not Included. And uh, the reason you should watch it is because it is a very 
it's a very simple story, but it's very impactful and a very emotional story of a father being put on the spot to take care of a child and growing to love that child and then the possibility of that now being taken away. And it's like, it's a comedy feel good. It's like a feel good. Com- yeah. It's not really, yeah. oh, it's not no, super it's not, serious. It's not, like, it's not sad. Cool. It's a lot of comedy in it cool. for yeah. sure. It's definitely a family. It's a, it's a family film, but there's definitely, um, it's definitely emotionally pulling. Cool. That's a cool I, title, by the way. I really like that. I like it's I like that. it's I definitely like I would definitely want to do a rewatch of it mm-hmm. now that I've been thinking about it. Guess because we gotta it watch is, it then. Yeah, it's right. it's definitely really good. Yeah. Do you guys have one? You can go. All right. I so know. mine is Pearl. I'm obsessed with Pearl. He's we saw, obsessed. Well, I mean, we watched it in I'm this theater that was too. built in the 20s in Virginia, and it's styled like an old movie. Yeah. So it just was like um, the perfect setting. I still haven't seen Pearl. Oh man. <sighs> It, I, it's such a, a, I mean, it's a fun film, you know, it's, it's something, uh, it, it was kind of like watching a movie that we would make that like, that's exactly what, like from the cinematography side of it to like yeah. how, how it's like every part of it is like what we want to do. So it was kind mm-hmm. of like seeing, um, <clears throat> our dream on the screen, mm-hmm. you know, of our movies there. So that, that's like a personal reason of why we liked it so much. Now it it was a it was a roller coaster of a ride. It, it it definitely heeds to what Tarantino says of laugh, then serious, and then it goes like crazy sideways and throws things it's in like there. Carrie. It's like Carrie. Yeah, Carrie. and I don't want to give anything away, but like I was going I, I only saw the one trailer and I was like, Okay, let's go watch it and then I came out of there, I was like I was not expecting any of that. Like it was That's awesome. It's just a fun movie. So yeah. one one sentence as to why. Sorry, that was like ten sentences. Um, it's entertaining. It's fun. Um, great storytelling. As every movie should be. Yeah. Haley. Um, I think a movie no one is talking about is White Noise, from oh, Noah Baumbach. Yeah, it's with a. Uh... Greta uh, Gerwig Driver. and Adam Driver. Yeah. Yes. Have you guys seen it? I've seen the trailer, but yeah, it kind of flew under so the radar. It is so good. I actually, I, yeah, I did try to watch it. And oh, you didn't like sorry. it? <laughs> Anytime he makes that face. It's like, yeah, you're like, mm. it, It's definitely a movie that you could either hate or you really yes. like. It's, you have to. Yeah, well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's exactly what it is, White Noise. It's a film. It's like a really, <laughs> yeah. it's really grandiose nothing. Yeah, it's like, exactly. It's, it's like Spielberg without the substance yes yeah. exactly it's like exactly. the people that use white noise to sleep like you're either gonna like it or you don't yeah right? yeah. yeah i just thought it's <laughs> it flew under the radar it was very it was fun it was fun. so one reason why people should check it out it was fun it was fun okay that's the simple <laughs> suffice clean all right oh, guys. and the menu sorry in the menu if you haven't yes, seen the menu. don't get him good. started right? oh, okay okay <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, it's on the menu it was really great yeah, yeah. uh but we can talk about that later okay last segment it's gonna be very brief really quick this is take one in this segment we are gonna list top movies where you guys only have two choices you have to say whether the movie is underrated or overrated you don't get to say good you don't get to say neutral okay. and uh yeah it's gonna be very quick firing on the top of your head what are you thinking all right so here we go the usual suspects under under yeah <laughs> next one uh whiplash over 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 uh casablanca under underrated is that what it means underrated yeah yep. yeah yeah underrated a little underrated <laughs> he, no he, he's like a, he, he's like, i'm not gonna go against this very... one but he's like oh, definitely oh, in my heart it's over yeah, it's <laughs> not, it was my favorite movie in high school so yeah uh rear window under. oh my under. god under, under. yeah it's my favorite one of my favorite is one of my favorite films uh apocalypse now under you're doing this to me you're doing this it's like you looked at all my favorite movies it's under yeah under all right and uh let me see here uh american beauty i haven't seen over i haven't seen it yeah i feel like it's over but i haven't seen it it's okay i'll throw another one in there uh the shining over under. Mm. It's under. <laughs> it's totally under. 
Like, we're divorced. Austin, we're Austin, done. It's like I'm abstaining. That's in my top five films. So it's hard. Yeah, it's a great. It's a great. It's a great film. I just think it's a. It's just. I you think know. it can be overrated. I think in the Halloween era. I think it, it deserves. A de- Dude, I could talk a whole podcast about <laughs> The Shining. Yeah. Yeah. It's so you haven't said. You haven't said. You got to pick one. I have to say under I'm required, even if it is overrated. Austin Spicer is saying The Shining is underrated. <laughs> Get on him about that. All right, uh, and one more. Toy Story. Over. <laughs> <laughs> how do you how do you pick one? It's like a kids movie. It's kind of big. Is Toy Story over or underrated? Did we say Chicken Little instead. <laughs> nope, it's Toy Story. You have to pick one. Is there like a no like a middle like? No, nope. I don't think it's overrated. But I <laughs> nope. don't think it's underrated. Like, I mean, for gotta... its time for our childhood, it it de- it the hype was it. Like that was you know. I'll say overrated. Whatever. Yeah, Haley. You gotta pick one. Yes or no? <laughs> over. I guess. Oh my gosh, everyone! Haley and Osner are saying Toy Story is overrated. <laughs> Get them. Uh, let them know why they're wrong. Hey, we're already canceled. It's fine. <laughs> All right, guys. Unfortunately, that is the end of this episode of Cinephiliax or Cinedomes' newest podcast, Cinephiliax. As always, I am your co-host Daniel Scott Dejess, and with me today, AK was... guys was i know i, I kind of ak <laughs> ak yeah founder and owner of kiara pictures yep and also ak uh we had wonderful guests today didn't we yes we did thank you guys so much for showing up Thanks today for having Appreciate us. You having as us. always guys it was the wonderful Haley and austin spicer <clears throat> uh where can we uh find you guys if you wanted to be found in the trash can that's where we found <laughs> <laughs> in the club in the, in the club spicer productions hey, hey. spicer productions guys uh if you liked any of the conversations today and want to have more or if you think you have an idea or something that you would like to do on film as they are experienced with that and versatile uh reach out to them connect with them maybe you can start something all right thanks guys <laughs> <laughs>